So let's take a look at a truth table. So we're going to work this example here, but first I want to review the basics. So I just have a, a quick little reference chart here we can look back to with the OR statement, with an AND statement, and with an IF-THEN column that I, I squeezed in here. So P's and Q's, I only have two statements, so I have two to the second number of rows, four. The P's I go true, true, false, false, and the Q's I alternate, true, false, true, false. For OR, an OR statement is true if either of the inputs was true. Right? So if P is true or Q is true, I'm going to put a true in my answer column. So you'll notice the only false I have there is when both P and Q are false. For the AND column, if P and Q is true, that's when I get a true. Everybody else is false because they have at least one false coming in the input. For the IF-THEN column, notice there's only one false. The false happens if P is true and Q is false. So if you did P but you still didn't get Q, then that's the false one. One of the nice things about the if-then is that if P is false, it doesn't really matter what Q is. Your answer is going to be a true. Okay. Oh, my other basics then. The little tilde means that you change, it's the not, changes all the T's to F's and F's to T's. And then to know how many rows you need, if you have N distinct statements, you need two to the N rows. So in my little table here, I have two statements, P and Q. So I need two to the second rows, four, which is what I have. In the example I wanted to show you, I have P, Q, and R. I have three statements. So that means I need two to the three, or eight rows, which I've already started with. And notice I've organized them similarly to my little four over here. The P's, I do half of them trues, and then I do the next half falses. For the Q, I do by twos, so two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses, and then R's I alternate. It's just a quick way to make sure you get all of the possibilities taken care of. Now let's work on our table. So I'm going to need a column for the different pieces in my argument here. So the first thing, let me get a different color, working inside out, I need to do P or Q. So I'm just looking at these two rows, and I'm going to use my OR statement here. So if P or Q is true, I'll put a true, otherwise I'm going to put a false. So true or true, okay, that's true, that's true, true or false, I still have one true, so I'm good, true or false, still good, false or true, still good, okay, everybody's looking good, oh, here we go, false or false, that's false, and then it's the same for the last, excellent. Now, I need to remember this first part is called the antecedent. Let's go ahead and finish that antecedent, because now I have to not that. So take the negation of what we just did, which, remember, essentially just changes all of those letters to the other letter. So all of my T's become falses, and I'm trying to keep everything lined up. Those of you with the lined paper are going to do better. And then all my two falses become trues. Excellent. I'm ready to put it all together now. I'm ready to do my answer row. So not P or Q, if that, then R. All right? So this I look at first, and then I look back to R for this one. I don't have to recopy R here because I'm just going to look. So false, then true, so that's going to be true. My row column over here is true. My last one, if true then false, oh shucks, there's my false. So all of them are trues except that eighth one is false. That last false keeps it from being, remember that tautology that you know about when they're all trues get a tautology. 
I hope this helps.